name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. And a very, very warm welcome to our Sunday evening Mass here at the Co-Cathedral of the Holy Family. I welcome all of you who have come here to celebrate this Holy Eucharist. We come here as a family of faith of prayer. We come before the Lord to thank him, to praise him, and to adore him. I also want to greet all those who are following our celebration online. We are in communion with one another and with the Lord. In the gospel today, we come across a scene where Jesus, even in his own town, is not accepted. His preaching makes people angry. They reject his teaching. They become so angry they want to take him out of the town and throw him over a cliff. This brings us face to face with one of the realities of life that each of us faces in different ways. Opposition. How to handle opposition, those who do not agree with us. That can even happen in our own families. So let us pause for a moment as we begin our celebration of this Holy Mass, praying for the gift of harmony, the gift of serenity, the gift of acceptance. For the times when we got angry, when we rejected others, let us now ask for pardon and healing. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honour you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. But do you gird your loins, stand up and tell them all that I command you? Be not crushed on their account, as though I would leave you crushed before them. For it is I this day who have made you a fortified city, a pillar of iron, a wall of brass against the whole land, against Judah's kings and princes, against its priests and people. They will fight against you but not prevail over you. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Your response will be, I will sing of your salvation. I will sing of your salvation. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me and deliver me. Incline your ear to me and save me. I will save your Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. For you are my rock and my fortress. O oh my God, rescue me from the hand of the wicked. For you are my hope, O Lord, my trust, O God, from my youth. On you I depend from birth. From my mother's womb, you are my strength. My mouth shall declare your justice, day by day your salvation. O God, you have taught me from my youth, and till the present, I proclaim your wondrous deeds. Our reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. If there are prophecies, they will, br they will be brought to nothing. 
If tongues, they will cease. If knowledge, it will be brought to nothing. For we know partially and we prophesy partially. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I used to talk as a child, think as a child, reason as a child. When I became a man, I put aside childish things. At present, we see indistinctly, as in a mirror, but then face to face. At present, I know partially, then I shall know fully, as I am fully known. So faith, hope, love remains. These three, but the greatest of these is love. The word of the Lord. Let us all stand. Together, the Lord sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to, poor, to proclaim, proclaim liberty, liberty to, to captives. captives. Gospel according to Luke. Jesus began speaking in the synagogue, saying, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Isn't this the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do you hear in your native place the things that we heard were done in Capernaum? And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath, in the land of Sidon. And again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But Jesus passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. No. 
no prophet is accepted in his own native place. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, the scene in the synagogue that Sabbath seems pretty disturbing. A people who have come for worship turn angry to the extent of intending to drag him around the town and throw Jesus over a cliff. Today's Gospel presents us with the reality of something that we all face from time to time, opposition. Opposition, anger, resentment, rejection. First of all, the prophet or the person who speaks the word of God is going to meet opposition. While that applies especially to the one who has to preach it, it also applies to all of us who have to try to live it. Even in families, there can be opposition. Sometimes teenagers oppose their parents. Sometimes parents oppose their children. Sometimes there can be opposition between husband and wife. Even in our church communities, there can be opposition, prejudice, and outright rejection. Some truths are often bitter. Some truths are often hard to swallow. And we too may be angered or agitated when someone, a priest or even a bishop, tells us a truth that we don't want to hear. Parents who have adult children and who no longer practice the faith often ask me, what is the best thing to do in this situation? I think the best thing to do is to love them. From the second reading today, the great lesson that we have learned there, the way of love. To love and respect them and try not to judge them. They know what you believe, even if they don't agree with it. Your fidelity to what you believe speaks to them more than you can re realize. If we continue to quietly practice our faith and love and be patient with the people around us, we will tell people about what we believe without having to say a word. And if people mock you, sometimes even family members, don't be afraid to tell them that you respect what they do or don't believe. And they should respect your faith also, whether they agree with it or not. I heard a story about a priest 
who was going to stay for a weekend with his niece and her partner, which was a little awkward because they were both into the occult, occult practices. And he was a priest. They also knew that he knew that they were into this kind of occult practices. But for the few days that he was with them, he never once mentioned a word about it or made any remarks or comments. Instead, he was just very loving towards them and showed them great respect. And they were so moved by this that it actually brought about their conversion. and They stopped these occult practices. Frank Duff, the man who founded the Legion of Mary, had this saying, win an argument, but lose a soul. Win an argument, but lose a soul. Arguments generally don't win people over, but love does. In one of his famous speeches, Martin Luther King said something very similar. He said, to our bitter, our bitterest opponents, we say, we shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our capacity to endure suffering. We shall meet your physical force with soul force. Do to us what you will. We shall continue to love you. Throw us in jail. We shall still love you. Send your hooded perpetrators of violence into our community at the midnight hour and beat us and leave us half dead, and we shall still love you. One day we will win freedom, but not only for ourselves. We shall so appeal to your heart and conscience that we shall win you over in the process. What happened in the synagogue in Nazareth can happen today in the church. We may carry prejudices with us into our places of worship. And if we do, we block out the message of God, the message that God wants to give us. Our prejudice can be against the, the very priest or preacher who addresses us, against uh, someone maybe in the congregation, maybe the choir, maybe the readers or other church helpers, or against the church as an institution. A prejudiced mind will never sit comfortably in church and will never find fulfillment in worship or carry the gospel message home with him or her. Mahatma Gandhi, during his student days, began to read the gospels and even considered embracing Christianity. He believed that the teachings of Jesus offered a solution to the caste system that divided and still divides 
the people of India. One Sunday, he decided to attend Mass at a nearby church and talk to the priest about becoming a Christian. When he entered the church, however, the usher refused to give him a seat and suggested that he go and worship with his own people. Gandhi left the church and never returned. If Christians have cast differences also, he said, I might as well remain a Hindu. That ushers prejudice not only betrayed Jesus, but also turned a person away from knowing Jesus more closely. So you see how important it is here in our church, especially the ushers and all of us indeed, to welcome, to welcome everybody, anybody who comes here to visit. If there is Mass in English, welcome those who are from the Arabic community. If there is Mass in Tagalog, welcome those from the English community. Welcome. Do we take prejudices into our places of worship? Are we prejudiced against individuals or any member of the community? Are we prejudiced against people of a different language, of a different right, someone who comes from a different country or a different background? If so, we need to turn to Jesus for healing. Lord, heal me of my bitterness, my anger, and opposition. Make me an instrument of your love. Make me an instrument of your peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Dear brothers and sisters, we have listened to the word of God. We now pray for the grace to take that word of God to heart and to live it in our daily lives. We now recite together the creed, praying for a deeper faith, a more lively faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The General Intercessions. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father for the qualities that Christ expects in his followers, so that we may experience the joy and peace he has promised. Let your response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Paul Hinder, our apostolic administrator, 
bishops, priests, religious and laity, that they may seek the kingdom of God and not strive merely for material possessions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who mourn the loss of their loved ones, that Christ may comfort them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer on account of material poverty and persecution, that the Lord may give them the strength to bear their crosses. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each one of us gathered here, that we may, like our Lord, strive for justice in our society and be true peacemakers in our homes and in our neighborhood. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the Synod, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, for those infected, for the entire tireless medical staff, and for the halting of the coronavirus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for our own personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your Son was a wonderful example of love and mercy when he lived upon this earth. Give us the grace to imitate him more closely and to follow him more faithfully. We ask this through the same Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May we accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. We ask you this, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bishop Paul, our apostolic administrator, with me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Jesus showed us the way of love. Let us pray to the Father in the words Jesus, his Son, taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Dear brothers and sisters, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Most sacred heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in you, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. We ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Synodal Prayer. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may journey together to eternal life and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son forever.